So what is a cryptocurrency? If you've clicked on this video, you're probably a beginner or you're wondering to learn more in the crypto world and you are in the perfect place. So if you want to learn more about the blockchain, about wallets, about cryptos, about good cryptos, future technical analysis lessons, fundamental analysis, and basically everything you need to get started in the crypto world, subscribe to the Satoshi Club right now, okay? Now let's get into what is crypto. I'm going to explain what cryptocurrencies are. I'm going to show you a few use cases for cryptocurrencies and I'm going to show you a few really good cryptos out there that are pretty much essential for you to get started and start researching into something that is a little bit more complex than B Bitcoin itself, right? So let's get straight into it. Cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency. We all know that, okay? It's secured by cryptography. We don't all know that. And for those of you who want to learn more about cryptography, you can simply Google search it because it is uh, quite complicated for me to explain right now. It is basically based on encryption of data, which means that it is nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spend in the crypto world. So what is this double spending problem? In the traditional banking and fiat system, when you send a dollar from your account to somebody else's account, there is a possibility or, you know, in the records, your dollar is actually duplicated. So it's still in your account, still in the other person's account, but they see it and you don't see it. And then you don't know who has the real dollar and who has the already used up dollar. So that's my very brief explanation of the double spending problem. And once again, if you want me to discuss it, make sure to, you know, drop a comment down below. I'll check it out and I'll talk about it in the future. Now, this leads to the fact that cryptocurrencies are uh, based upon a large network of computers in a totally peer-to-peer -peer and decentralized fashion. So you have a lot of different computers out there which allow several different benefits when it comes to the crypto world, which come in form of use cases as well, which I'm going to explain in a few minutes. But first of all, let's summarize. Cryptocurrency, it's a form of digital asset based on a network that is distributed across a large number of computers. Some experts believe that it can disrupt many industries such as law, such as finance, because of the superiority of the blockchain technology. Now, if you want to learn what blockchain is and how it actually works, make sure to check out my previous video because that's where I explain everything about blockchain. It is lesson four in the Crypto Basics and this is lesson five in my Crypto Basics series. Now, advantages of cryptocurrencies, there's quite a few. Cheaper, faster money transfers, a decentralized system, no centralized authority to take a commission or anything, but also it comes in the form of some negative things because if you don't have a central authority, there's no regulation and people can misuse it. But generally, one of the largest and most important benefits of Bitcoin is that it does not collapse at a single point of failure. So if you have a server farm or a data server somewhere in the world under one roof, if a hurricane comes and just plows through the whole thing, all of your data is gone, right? Or corrupted. But on the blockchain, if you have, you know, a thousand computers right there working on the blockchain, even if that hurricane passes, there's still millions of computers out there in the world that are working as nodes in this system and still have the data right there. So your data is never going to get lost. The blockchain literally keeps your data forever. That's just, it's very difficult to wrap your head around the superiority of blockchain as a technology. Now, whatever crypto does in the future, I don't know what it's going to do. Is it going to become the global currency or not? Nobody knows that, but blockchain is there to stay. Now, some of the disadvantages of cryptos includes price volatility, high energy consumption for mining activities, and also bad use, uh, misuse of cryptocurrencies or this use in criminal activities, which, you know, happens with everything. There's good people, there's bad people around the world. Good people will use things for good stuff. Bad people will use things for bad stuff. It is all about intention, and I'm not blaming cryptocurrencies for that. So understanding a little bit more about cryptocurrencies they basically enable secure online payments without the use of intermediaries. So why is this a benefit? Well, because anybody around the world who has access to the internet, but maybe doesn't have access to a financial institution is able to use a cryptocurrency to get money sent to them or from them in some way. It's very simple. All you need is an internet connection and mild knowledge of how to send and receive crypto, which, uh, you know, guess what? You're going to learn on this channel. <laughs> okay. So cryptos can be mined or purchased from cryptocurrency exchanges. You also have trading instruments that people use, such as, you know, Bitcoin ETFs. There's also just simple trading of cryptocurrencies based on technical fundamental analysis and all of this stuff. So there's a lot of different stuff that you can do with crypto. You can invest, you can day trade, you can stake them nowadays, you can yield farm, you can do all this stuff, which is maybe quite complicated, or you can just keep it on your wallet and wait or huddle as they like to say. Everything is a valid strategy as long as you are, you know, entering the Web3 world. I think it is a good thing. Web3 is the way to go. It is the future based upon the simple fact that blockchain technology is very, very 
um, very much more superior than any technology we have on the planet right now uh, when it comes to that certain uh, well, not even that. Blockchain can be used for every, everything, right? It can, it's currently used for cryptos, but it can be used in the law. It can be used in finance, as you said, like disrupting of these industries. It can be used pretty much anywhere. So I guess we're going to have to wait and see what type of use cases emerge for the blockchain itself. If you want to watch my blockchain video, once again, you can check it out on the site. And we're at the types of cryptocurrencies right now. So back in the day, 2008, an anonymous person called Satoshi Nakamoto, after whom we actually named this channel right here, invented uh, Bitcoin and introduced it to the world via a white paper. So that was the first crypto white paper to be released. Since then, there has been a plethora of different cryptocurrencies emerging on the market, all of them claiming to have a different function, different specs, and basically do different things. Now, a lot of these, you know, for example, Ethereum markets itself as a gas for the underlying smart contract platform. Ripple uh, is used by banks to facilitate transfers and, you know, just different use cases. I'm going to show you a few cryptos in a few minutes, so just be patient with me. Hold on. Um, only 21 million Bitcoins will ever exist. That's very important to note because the supply of Bitcoin is limited and the amount that people mine when it comes to mining cryptocurrencies uh, or Bitcoin specifically is getting halved because that is what's written in Bitcoin smart contracts since the start. So every three or four years, the amount of Bitcoin rewards that you get for mining Bitcoin gets cut in half, which means that it has an ever uh, deflationary sort of nature since its inception. Now, who is Satoshi Nakamoto? We can get into some conspiracy theories. I can talk about this for hours, so I'm not going to start the topic in today's video. Maybe later on, if you guys want to see it, drop a comment down below. Now, also a lot of altcoins have been launched. Some of these are clones or forks of Bitcoin. And we have different types of cryptocurrencies such as Solana, Litecoin, Ethereum, Cardano, EOS and a lot more. And the global crypto market cap reached almost three trillion dollars at some point. Lastly, are cryptocurrencies legal? Well, it depends from country to country. As of December 2021, El Salvador was the only country in the world to allow Bitcoin as a legal tender for monetary transactions. If you want to watch my El Salvador video, you can do so right about here. Now, next up, let's look at a few use cases of cryptocurrencies themselves. Now, as always, I'm going to leave all of these links down in the description below to help you learn on your own and try to get you to research a little bit more about the Web3 world in total, because I believe it is very beneficial for you all. Cryptos open up, first of all, access to financial services for users around the world who may not have access to traditional financial services. Second of all, Ethereum itself was the catalyst for growth of the crypto space into an industry through the ERC-20 standard. So Ethereum started the whole global altcoin network, right? Bitcoin was there as the true meaning of decentralization. Ethereum made it more efficient to build on it, to build decentralized apps, to build smart contracts, and everybody is building on Ethereum. IOTA, for example, aims to de develop use cases for the Internet of Things in real life. IOTA is one of my favorite projects out there, and I probably will make a separate dedicated video on it just because how cool their Tangle is and this whole ecosystem and concept that they've created doesn't work yet. But once it starts working, it's going to be huge. Asset-backed tokens as well grant ownership to assets such as real estate and precious metals. So this can be um, gold-backed crypto cryptocurrencies, right? It can be real estate-backed cryptocurrencies. It can be, you know, poppy seed black, you know, just backed by anything, right? Anything you want can back a cryptocurrency if you have enough. It's sort of like the gold standard for the dollar, which is not being, fo uh, you know, followed anymore. And also you have some other asset-backed tokens in the form of stable coins, which trade at parity with fiat, fiat currencies. So basically they are backed by uh, real currencies or you know fiat currencies in real life to have hold a peg to for example the dollar you know i have a video about stable coins as well wow would you imagine that take a look at that video as well on the side right here and uh you know just getting a little bit deeper creating a digital wallet to transfer bitcoin often offers people access to a store of value independent of traditional banks so you know people in africa can use it people who don't have financial service access Ethereum popularized smart contracts and the ERC-20 standard. IOTA is trying to uh, connect machine trade services and resources with each other with the Internet of Things, 5G connectivity, that type of stuff. A lot of cool stuff going on in crypto, guys. So these are the gist of the things. And if you want to learn about all of the cryptocurrencies out there, just head on over to Coin market cap where you can learn pretty much everything you have your list of cryptos right here in order of which one has the most market cap which means which one has the most money uh, invested into it 
So Bitcoin, for example, has $378 billion inside. The global market cap is just under $1 trillion. And there is a few charts that you can check out pressing this button right here. For example, the global, uh, the total crypto market cap chart, you can zoom in, you can do whatever you want. You have the total market cap excluding Bitcoin as well. You have the Bitcoin dominance chart where we can see that over time, Bitcoin dominance is decreasing and market cap of other cryptocurrencies is increasing. And that is only due to knowledge in the market expanding because everybody, when they come into the crypto world, first of all, they learn about Bitcoin. And then it takes them like six months to find out that Ethereum exists. So just because of this knowledge disparity, we don't have a lot of people investing into altcoins as of this time. But as you can see, Bitcoin dominance is in a downtrend and Ethereum dominance is quite in an uptrend. It is this blue one right here. Now, lastly, if you want to check out different types of cryptos, you have DeFi, which is decentralized finance projects, right? You can check them out judging by market cap. You have NFT projects as well. You have metaverse projects. You have Polkadot projects, so projects on the Polkadot chain. Chains are a different thing that I'm going to discuss in the future as well. I really suggest you subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to learn more. Solana, Avalanche and a lot more. Now I'm getting pretty tired. This is it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I really hope to see you all in the next one. Lastly, just one thing. I'm not a financial advisor and you should do your own due diligence before investing into anything in the crypto, NFT or blockchain world. Be very careful out there. Subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you all in the next video.